In case you didn't know, I have a lot of music on compact discs. My generation made the big switch to streaming services like Spotify, and if anyone is promoting physical media, usually they are talking about vinyl. Lots of people will sacrifice convenience for something more natural sounding, but it turns out both are sacrificed when it comes to CDs. So why do I cling to over 900 of those damn things? The answer lies in that number. At some point, I started saying, why stop now? As far as I'm concerned, the items in a collection could be totally useless, but the act of collecting gives them purpose regardless. However, there is an artist who requires you to own CDs if you want to hear all his work, and by now he can be heard on roughly 10% of my discs, whether they come from the source or I burned them myself. You would have expected my first Jandek album to be something like Ready for the House or Blue Corpse, but it turned out to be something more obscure. In a part of my collection that continues to grow nearly a decade later, I took my first step with White Box Requiem, which was also the first thing I ordered over the internet. I had not been reading what other people said about these albums, so that's why I simply decided on a cheap one without any songs I knew. And what an interesting choice it was. When it comes to guitar tuning, this album has one of my favorites, since you can't find it anywhere else. It sounds close to open F, but I'm pretty sure there's a little twist. Anyway, it might be a bit of a stretch to call this a concept album, but what ties some of these songs together is death, hence the title, White Box Requiem. Some lyrics are from the living, while others are from the dead, and whatever the white box may be, it looks like that's how the whole scenario began. It all sounds like the recipe for a classic Jandek record, but there are two aspects that might drive some fans away. Over a dozen of the previous albums had some instrumental music, so it's nothing new in the catalog. However, it comprises almost half the total length of White Box Requiem. If you want to hear the entire album, you really have to be comfortable with the playing style of this era, especially for the nearly eight-minute track, Walking in the Meadow, which was featured in the documentary Janik on Corwood. Oddly enough, what also makes the album a mixed bag are the lyrics, which I originally described as fragmented. I do think the simplified, often confused wording is part of what makes this a special release, but some might say it's a shocking departure from the last three. Even though I think too much of the album is instrumental, track one kind of has a right to be. The Glade does a fine job letting the new guitar tuning sink in, and if you think this is a concept album, the song sets the scene for the stuff Jandek will sing about. Perhaps the story begins on a Glade? Regardless, the title track follows and introduces us to a narrator who finds the titular box somewhere. He is instructed not to open it under pain of death, yet his curiosity still gets the best of him. Do not open pain of death. I opened it anyway. What mystifies me is that he signed his initials on this object, which might be Jandek's way of making the tale of Pandora's box his own. Anyway, it almost sounds like the narrator died right away, but one of the things Pandora released from the box was mortality itself. That incident might be what's behind the vague phrase, I died anyway. Now the narrator is just a spirit, and he closes the song, by visiting a loved one who presumably still walks the earth. If you can only take one track, I think this will give you the best impression of the album. As a song, Second Thoughts is rather bare-boned, but Second Thoughts as a concept does return a few times later in the record. For now, Jandek simply defines it and leaves us with so much of the first thoughts, as if he's too busy in the present to reconsider anything. Then we have back-to-back -back instrumentals. 
Concrete Steps is where Jandek really starts to meander with his playing, but for some reason, this is the instrumental I prefer. The title might make you think it's a segue, but that doesn't really make sense with Eternal Waltz just ahead. It is certainly not a waltz, and it's funny how this is the second time that misnomer appears in Jandek's work. Anyway, the song's selling point is that it becomes one of the faster tracks around the halfway mark. At first, it sounds like Jandek bailed out on the song Thinking, because he gives us two conditional clauses, but then says, I can't say it. It may have been writer's block, but then part yesterday starts with, yesterday I could say it, I know I could. So both tracks almost complement each other. However, only the latter is essential. After that opening line is another Jandekian riddle. I'm part yesterday, which makes me all today. I guess that's a statement on the way his past affects how we see him now, but he doesn't want to give details. Later, Jandek integrates the white box and second thought concepts. Apparently, he opened the box on a whim, so the second thoughts did not come until it was too late. It's hard to tell what part yesterday contributes to the overall story, but the lyrics are fairly ambitious for this record. On Evening Sun, Jandek discusses mortality and the afterlife in as few words as possible. Also, the opening is probably the closest thing to a riff on this album. Then, on the next couple of songs, it sounds like the new narrator is the one who was addressed in the title track. On Must Have Been a Miracle and Wondering, his or her loved one has returned as a spirit eliciting ecstatic and incredulous reactions. You might notice the latter in the mysterious lyric, I can't believe you hardly, but I can believe you hardly. Finally, we have a strong closer in Didn't Really Die, which features the narrator coming to terms with his death. The box is not directly mentioned, but since he's been ambivalent about something, I'm guessing it's on his mind. It's also suggested that he gave in to peer pressure when he opened it. Whatever the case, he is okay with what happened, because somehow he can still be with the person he loves. In one of the more profound lines, he draws a distinction between dying and killing himself. Perhaps Third Thoughts would be a better name for this track. Anyway, Jandek ends the album with the vague question, Do you know why? Of course, my answer is, no, I don't, and I like it that way. Although White Box Requiem is unique for its guitar tuning, instrumentals, and themes, the setup is very consistent throughout the record. You will find no harmonica, accordion, or even slide guitar, so Jandek can only experiment with his playing style. That's what separates the album from other homogenous ones like 6 and 6. Also, you might ask... Did Jandek switch things up with another little reverb section? Well, I forgot to mention he made the whole album out of that, and that's really the cherry on top. It really suits his voice, which is why I wish he sang more. Nevertheless, he moans his way through three standout tracks, and the title track was good enough to warrant a cover version. This may not be the first Jandek album people talk about, but for me, it offers a sense of nostalgia that not many others can match.